This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14, and it reads, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. All praises, all power, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash. All praises, all power, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash. All praises, all power, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash. Yahweh being the name of the Father. Who the world anyway calls God, Yahweh, meaning He exists. Yahweh Shai being the name of the Son, who the world anyway calls Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai meaning He delivers. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach one and Google who taught me this truth. Peace and salutation to the Akyam, the fellow laborers, the hopeful elect. Pushing this truth of risk of the own lives throughout the four corners of the earth. To the Akwathi of Listeren, the sin of learning, sincerity, and truth, and in silence. Shalom. Akyam meaning brothers, Akwathi meaning sisters. Shalom meaning peace be unto you. Matthew 24, a matter of fact. John. John 15. Verse 22, red letter. If I had not come and spoken unto them, right, Yahweh Shai, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin, right? Now they have no cloak, no excuse. So Jake, Israelites, Israel being a people for a place. This word, this gospel, gospel meaning good news, is for the Israelites. Right? And when the Lord comes on the scene, when the Lord returns on the scene, there's going to be no excuse. Because every Israelite will have heard the word, man. Matthew 15. Verse 24. But he answered and said, red letter, Yahweh Shai, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Yahweh Shai only came for the Israelites, no one else. Acts 5. That's clear as day. Acts 5, verse 29. And it reads The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai. Whom ye slew and hang on a tree. Crucified. Him hath power exalted with his right hand. To be a prince. And a savior. Who's this talking about? Yahweh Shai. For to give repentance to Israel. You see that? For to give repentance to Israel. Israel only. Israel being a people for a place. You so-called indigenous. You so-called Latino. You so-called Negro. And speckled bird. Those that look like the other nations, but their spirit goes back to Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob through their fathers. Repentance is only for Israel. And forgiveness of sins, right? Yahweh Shai is our way back to the Heavenly Father, who is Yahweh. The only way back. Right? It's not for everybody. It's for the elect on this side, Israel as a whole, but it's for the elect on this side. Back to Matthew 24, verse 14. And Lord willing, we have that number. Matthew 24, verse 14, it reads, red letter. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come, right? And this word is going out via the unicorn, the camps. The mouths of the prophets, 
right? For a witness unto all nations. Let's look at, let's look at this word, all nations. Matthew 24, verse 14. For a witness unto all nations, right? Wacky tacky Christian, quick to jump on that. C, C, C. Let's look at it. For a witness, let's look at this word, word witness. The Strong's G3142. Strong's G3142. Marturian. Marturian. Presumed derivative, something evidential. Evidence given, right? Witness unto all nations. To be testified, testimony, witness, right? The testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And what are prophets what are their prophets doing? Prophesying, man. Right? All nations, ethnos, Strong's G1484. Strong's G1484, ethnos, ethnos. Ethnos, ethnicity, right? A multitude, whether of men or of beasts, associated or living together. A company, troops, swarm. A multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus, the human family, a tribe, nation, people, group. In the Old Testament, foreign nations not worshiping the true power, pagans, Gentiles. Paul uses the term for Gentile Christians as Israelites. Right? Israelite foreigners, scattered Israelites. Right? It says, uh, what does the scripture say? First, the first call Christians in Antioch. Let's get that. Followers, the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Right? Who were the disciples? Israelites. Acts 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Right? So we just read that. that uh, Matthew 24 verse 14, 14. Red letter. And this gospel, good news of the kingdom, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Right? To the Israelites. This gospel is only for the Israelites, man. All right, what's that scripture in Tobit? Tobit 13. Tobit 13, verse 3. Tobit 13, verse 3. And it reads, Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he hath scattered us among them. Right, so the Israelites are among the Gentiles. Israelite foreigners, scattered. Calling themselves Australian. Calling themselves American. Calling themselves Francophone, European. Calling themselves Kenyan, Ghanaian, Nigerian. But they're Israelites of the 12 tribes, scattered. This word scattered in the Old Testament, diaspora. Let's get it real quick. For edification's sake, for those new coming in, scattered. In the Old Testament, because the Apocrypha is from the Old Testament.
Or is it in the New, it's in the New Testament? My bad. If we go to James 101. Salakia. In the Greek, it's a uh, diaspora. 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 Strong, strong G120. A scattering, dispersion of Israelites disperse among foreign nations. Right? Of the Christians who are Israelites, the, the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch, scattered abroad among the Gentiles. Right? There's no way around it, man. Right? So this word's going out. And the prophets are back. Let's close. Revelation. Matter of fact, Acts 1. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power. This is red letter. Yahweh Shai said this. But ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, right? So the disciples, this is Yahweh Shai speaking to his disciples. They shall receive spiritual powers. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, right? Testify unto me, Yahweh Shai, both in Jerusalem, the, the, the apostles did it, in Jerusalem. And in all Judea, right, Apostle Paul, Apostle John, Apostle Peter, and in Samaria, right, the apostles, and the uttermost part of the earth, the uttermost part of the earth is America. The apostles of old didn't get on a ship and sail to America and prophesy. This is talk about reincarnation. This word going up, let's prove it real quick. Revelation 10 will close. Right? And then shall the end come. Right? And we're getting closer and closer to the end. Before before we go there, let's look up the word uttermost in Acts 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8, the word uttermost. Strong is G two zero seven eight. Strong's G two thousand seventy eight. Eschatas. Eschatas. Right. The root word. Eschatos, extreme, a la last in time or in place, last in a series of places. Is this not the fourth beast, man? There's nothing. There's no, there's no fifth beast written about. Last in a series of places. Last in a temporal succession. America, the last. Last referring to ta to, to to time. Last referring to time. Eon, age, America, of space, the uttermost part, the end of the earth, right, America. So the prophets, they didn't come to America. The prophets are back in, their, in, 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 in this carnation. Revelation 10, verse 10, and I took the little book out of the, out of the angel's hand and ate it up. The, the scriptures, this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding. This is the Apostle John, right? Took the little book out of the angel's hand, the scriptures, and ate it up. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey, right? Because when you first, when you receive this truth, it's sweet. This knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly, mind, was bitter, right? Because uh, in much wisdom cometh much grief. Let's get it. Ecclesiastes. 1 verse 18.
And it reads, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow, right? So the more knowledge you retain, the more grief and sorrow, man. That's the bitter, back in Revelation 10. Verse 11, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again. Right? This is the angel speaking to John. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again. Right? And we know according to history, John, John the Revelator died on the Isle, Isle of Patmos. Prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Right? John the Revelator died on the Isle of Patmos. So what's this talking about? Prophesying before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. This is talking about this, reincar this, this, this incarnation in the uttermost parts of the world. Right? We open with the scripture, this gospel must be preached. Let's close with it. To all the ends of the world, then then shall the end come. Matthew 24, verse 14. Red letter. And this gospel of the kingdom, this good news of the kingdom, kingdom of Israel, shall be preached in all the world for a witness, testimony, testify unto all nations. We looked up the meaning. It's talking about scattered Israelites, Israelite foreigners. And then Shall the end come? Stay prayed up, pray without ceasing. Shall I warm to the hopeful elect?